Thank you, Patty, for agreeing to do this interview with me today. I'm really happy to be here. I'm, I'm happy to talk to you about, about uh, what's going on in the learning and development space. Thank you. Please allow me to read this introduction for the benefit of those in our global audience who may not know you very well. Patty Shank is an internationally recognized learning designer and analyst, researcher, and author who is cited as one of the elite international learning experts. She works with organizations to analyze and find solutions for organizational performance needs and is regularly asked to speak at conferences and to train trainers, instructors, designers, and experts. Patty has authored, co-authored, or edited numerous learning books and eBooks. She was an award-winning contributing editor for Online Learning Magazine and previously served as the research director for the eLearning Guild. You can find her articles and research in eLearning Guild publications, Magna Publications Online Classroom, eLearning Industry, and ATD's Science of Learning and Senior Leaders and Executive Blogs. She started out as a trainer years ago and became a workplace learning leader in the healthcare industry. She continues to work on workplace learning projects so she understands the needs and constraints of improving work performance in workplace settings. She has a strong back business background which helps her connect business needs and viable learning and performance solutions. Her PhD trained her to read, do, and apply research. She continues to read and write about research because she is a longtime workplace learning practitioner who cares deeply about good outcomes. And as she says, using the evidence from various sciences, such as learning, educational psychology, usability, human computer interactions, and others, is the most effective and efficient way to get there. Patty lives in Colorado with her husband and loves to hike, read, cook, and travel. Patty, before we get into our three key questions, can you share with us what you think about the general state of the learning and development profession? Well, I think it's problematic, um, especially I, I think what we're going through now with the coronavirus pandemic has pointed out um, a lot of the problems, but let me just focus on one. Um, and I know that, that um, others uh, that you've interviewed feel the same way. Um, our, our field has become a content development field, especially around online learning. And content does not necessarily lead to learning. So, so we've got to focus on what works to improve skills, not on developing content. I'm not saying that content isn't developed, but I'm saying it's not the key issue here. So that's, that's my, my issue. And my, my fear is that those, <clears throat> those who are uh, struggling to get to get into online learning now are simply worrying about content development and it's not enough. In fact, it's probably not even the most important piece. Well, the the funny answer would be most of it, <laughs> so, but but um, here here's what I see being what research I see being violated constantly: um, memory, attention, cognitive load, which are all very very much related, um, and multimedia design, um, just completely. Um, violated all the time and these are not I, I get it that the articles themselves the research articles are difficult to read but what they tell us to do is not difficult to apply which is how i got into this in the first place because if it's not difficult to apply and the research tells us how to get our best outcomes then that's what we've got to do Well, all of the above, but if I was to pick 
one that people should start with, I, I would say uh, not overloading memory. Um, and we see that everywhere. It, it, just about everything that's designed uh, is designed to overload memory from, from too much content, from uh, a, a page full of links, which makes people feel like they'll never get through it, uh, from, from gratuitous images that, that steal some working memory to try to figure out how it applies. Um, th there's so much, and even multimedia design is all about memory. Uh, for instance, we give instructions on this page, and then the next page, we, we ask people to do something. Well, the instructions need to be with the thing that we're asking people to do, because we're asking people to remember what, ha what they read on the page before, and we know people can't do that. So that just needs to be that stuff, that basic memory, attention, cognitive load ha has, to be, has to be used right away. Because if that does, if, if we don't do that well, then it really doesn't matter what else we do. Well, I think all of them are damaging, but I'm going to pick one that that I spoke to when I um, was in that uh, debate at Online Educa in Berlin. And the debate was on the following statement, all learning should be fun. And um, research is pretty darn clear that while learning can be fun, it often isn't. Um, and it can't be, some things can't be made fun. Let me give you a, an example. Um, so, so the person I was debating with, whose name you would know, because um, he's very well known, said, uh, if you look at Olympic skaters, and he, he mentioned one in particular whose name is escaping me at the moment, you can tell that they're having a blast. And my response to that was, He's having a blast because he's put in the grueling, hard, not fun work of getting up at two o'clock in the morning and practicing for four hours at a skating rink. And none of that is fun. And our, our experts in expertise tell us very clearly that to gain real expertise requires a level of effort and gruelingness that, that um, that's just not optional. And um, there's a great phrase for this by, uh, that was coined by Robert Bjork, one of our great researchers, called desirable difficulties. And desirable difficulties are not optional. So if we are training people, so much of what we train people on is basic stuff. But I would assert that we need to train people to keep building expertise because expertise makes what we do better and it makes it less effortful and it makes it work better for all. And in order to do that, we, all, we will be asking people to do things that are not fun. Um, and so that, that's the one I'm going to pick, the myth that learning should all be fun. It just can't all be fun. Some can, but it can't all be fun.